If you're the type of guy who finds wearing a tie uncomfortable, try sporting a suit of armor. Armor reached its peak during the battle-filled 15th century. Initially, it was made of chain mail, tiny rings of metal linked together. Then, for greater protection, knights began wearing plate armor, suits made from large pieces of steel. Today, armorers make this obsolete battle gear mostly for historical reenactment buffs. This workshop specializes in custom-made suits of armor. The armorer has to take 45 different measurements just to prepare the pattern. He traces each pattern piece on a steel sheet that's about one and a half millimeters thick. Then he cuts along the trace line with a bandsaw. This is the breastplate, which covers the chest and abdomen. Now he begins to shape the piece using an automatic hammer. There's no mold or template to guide him. He works strictly by eye. Now that he has the basic shape, he refines it using a manual hammer. He strikes the metal against an upright log, a bag of lead beads cushioning the blows. This prevents the metal from deforming. A few lighter blows without cushioning in select spots to finalize the shape. Until now, he's been hammering the inside of the breastplate. Now he works the outside. He smooths the metal surface, a process known as planishing. Now using a different automatic hammerhead, he stretches out the breastplate's bottom edge to form a rim angling outward. He places the piece on an anvil, then using a manual hammer, planishes the rim. When you wear this heavy metal breastplate, the rim takes some of the weight off your shoulders by distributing it over your hips. The armorer checks the shape, then makes any necessary adjustments. Now using several different hammers again, he works his way around the rest of the breastplate, gradually rolling the edge onto itself to form a rounded lip. Rolling the metal onto itself to form the lip reinforces the perimeter of the breastplate, and the rounded edge prevents the sharp metal from cutting the skin. The breastplate is now ready for the finishing touches. First, the armorer smooths the surface with medium grit sandpaper, then with fine grit sandpaper, then the last step with fine grit paper and a polishing compound. Some breastplates have an articulated styling. For this model, the armorer uses three brass rivets to attach the sections. He fastens them loosely to enable the pieces to move. Then using rivets again, he attaches leather straps. A suit of armor is made up of about 20 different components, such as the front and back shin guards, called greaves, armor and leather gloves, called gauntlets, shoulder pieces, called pauldrons, and of course, the helmet and visor. A knight would don his suit of armor from the bottom up, Otherwise, the weight of the top components would have him keeling over half-dressed. In the Middle Ages, a suit of armor cost as much as a small farm. It was a prized luxury only the nobility could afford. Being a modern-day knight in shining armor doesn't come cheap either. A base model suit costs about $3,000. An elaborate one, up to $20,000.